stretch, yes. Uh, well, thanks very much. I, I, I just want to thank the organizers for uh, uh, this freak sequence of coincidences that brought me here. But uh, I think I'm representing the National Association of David Ryans. You, you couldn't get the uh, the third baseman, the all-star third baseman, David Ryan of the New York Mets. And so uh, he's in spring training right now. So anyway, here I am. So uh, also, uh, yeah, can we turn the projector off for a second? Or uh, how, how do you do the projector thing off? OK, all right. It's in Windows right now. Oh, it takes too long to come up. Wow, look at that thing. I didn't even know that was back there. Oh, yeah. Oh, neat. Okay. All right. Okay. That's well, uh, anyway, uh, like I said, there was a series of freak coincidences that's just too hard to explain that they led me here. And uh, uh, But when I heard about the invitation in mass circles, I thought, I love to draw circles. <laughs> I mean, I just, in fact, I think I, I just, just today, I was thinking, I should apply to the Guinness Book, because I believe I've drawn more circles, at least if you count the computer, than anybody in the whole world, in, in history or whatever. So, But anyway, I, I have tried to, uh, the other thing too is uh, I enjoyed going through the math festival, although I was, um, I'm afraid to say, totally clueless. So I didn't exactly know where I was supposed to be and all like that, so I just pulled out my games, and um, I played games with the kids and all like that. And then I didn't realize we were going to have like a, a fair number of under five-year-old crowd too. But I had toys for that too. So, oh yeah, I, I have to say, you know, yesterday there was a comment made that the the activities with uh, manipulatives seem to be more popular. And let's call them for what they are. They're toys. Okay, who wouldn't want to have toys? You know, and I, I I've been a fan of toys since um, since really I before I can remember and especially math toys and I treat myself to math toys every year it's a special treat and all like that so I thought I would begin at least the subject I go today with a toy here let me get it right so you can uh, read it here I don't know if you can it's unfortunately I can't really zoom in uh, this is a toy I had as a kid actually so I, I also have to admit that um, I um, as far as my experience, I sort of have had a lot of experiences you're describing, but since I, I grew up a long time ago, um, I, I'm, a, I'm a graduate of the new math. I don't know if anybody wants to admit that or not, but I was a, I was a new math. I loved it. I loved it. it was, the way it worked was incredible, and uh, I know that we've had this wonderful Russian influence, and I was just thinking, you know, I really owe that to the Russians. Because I had a I had a little model of Sputnik too, which I loved, <laughs> and and that that's what caused the explosion of uh, of concern about about mathematics in this country. And uh, anyway, I'm very grateful to it. And another thing I was grateful to in these days was the Edmund Scientific Company. Do you get funding from them? Man, they'd make the best math toys in the world, you know. So anyway, uh, so was there anybody who got uh, things of science? It was a monthly thing. My parents uh, signed. All right, okay, that's right. Yeah, exactly. And I, I loved it. I got that for years. Every month, you'd get this blue box that would have a thing of science in it. And they, they actually were mostly mathematical. You know, there was occasion. I have this distinct memory of memory of getting a little piece of uranium once, which you could not do in post 9/11 <laughs> era. But uh, and I imagine there was like three atoms of uranium or something. But most of the time, they were. Uh, the things that Edmund Scientific was famous for, uh, you know, optics. Optics is what they were famous for. Prisms. The first time I'd seen a diffraction grading, I got that in a thing of science. You and didn't get the I, gecko? Did pardon me? Did you get the gecko? The gecko. <laughs> oh, well, anyway, I don't know. I, I, I wish I had kept those. You know, there is actually somebody who keeps a, who's, kept, who's made a website of all the things of sciences over the 20 or 30 years that they existed. Oh, a great debt of gratitude towards uh, things of science. And one thing I got was a set of MOIR filters. This is Edmund Scientific's. This is their newer version of their MOIR filters. Yeah. You think it'll do that? Oh, yeah, it's actually it's a little better in focus. Uh, yeah. 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 All right, that's cool. There's a limit to the focus, though. I'm not exactly sure where we're Focus going. Focus only cranks so far. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, that's a 
the show for a few months. Okay, cool. Oh, well, that, now you can read it. That's excellent. Yeah, so you see that this is uh, Edmund Scientific Company Moir pattern number four. You know, and I, I've been fascinated with Moir since, uh, since the very beginning. Anyway, this is not a pattern yet, actually. This is only a, a, um, a system of radial lines. That's all it is. So the Moir pattern comes when, and so I had this for the five-year-olds yesterday, and they said, put the next one on, put the next one on. So we're not going to go through all the colors, okay? But uh, anyway, so uh, let's put on the next one here, okay? And, and okay, now i got to check that you're seeing this here, because with my eyes, I see things that other people don't. So, so what do you see right there? <laughs> What's the word for it? Circles, that's what I'm looking for. <laughs> exactly, right? Actually, that, you know, right now that's a conjecture for you. I mean, because this is a math problem. This is a genuine math problem to actually see that those really are circles. You know how many circles there are yet? Anybody count them yet? Just checking to see if there's any number theorists here. So. Okay, all right, well, you can count them later. Anyway, there's a lot of circles there. And there's a pattern. You can actually work out the formula. And it's cool as anything to work out the formula for what these ah, circles are. are. All circles passing through these two dots, right? Ah, yes. All circles passing through the two dots. Yeah, many exactly. Points, right. Many points of pencil. Many points of pencil. You know too much, OK? That's right. Yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah, they're, they're, that's right. The mathematical term is the pencil of circles. That's right. Uh, but it's even more than that. I mean, pencil, pencil is what you do math with, you know? <laughs> so there's a word. This, this, this is no ordinary set of circles. I mean, this is, this is a circle that once you learn a little bit, it just sends a shiver down your spine like that. Because this is a set of circles with a symmetry group acting on it. There's a group of transformations acting on it, carrying one to the other. And in fact, that's the next thing to work out, is what the, what the group of transformations are. And there are these famous uh, transformations. This is a group of Mobius transformations. So anyway, that's a... Uh, that's it like that. Now, now it's really fun to do, to work these things out. All right, I will put more colors on. What the heck, you know what I mean? You gotta, you, gotta, you gotta see it move around a little bit like that. You have to play with it like that. The motion is kind of cool. Like what's happening, you see a singularity. If I go through, you know, it's kind of like going through the black hole there or something like that. Okay, and then we do this. And, uh, okay, now, oh yeah, so now you get the little square dot pattern. You see that pattern? That's three, three star fields uh, on top of each other like that. So you can spend all day calculating these things. Okay. Actually, what's really cool, I don't have that one with me, but um, you can make a circle pattern. You can make a circle pattern that's a transparency like that. And then you can superimpose a circle pattern, uh, actually the limiting circle pattern, which is kind of hard to get because if you go right to the dot, it, it disappears. Pardon me? Yeah, but there is a limiting pattern if you do it in the right way. And if you, if you get that limiting pattern and superimpose that with a parallel line field, um, yeah, I haven't shown you my, I have moires of all kinds, parallel line fields, you name it. So you put a parallel line field on a, on a circle, on, a, on a, a pencil of circle pattern like this. Actually, you need a parabolic one if you know what that means. But when you get that, you get even higher curves. There are some articles about this. You get algebraic curves of degree three, also known as uh, elliptic curves. If you do it right, they're elliptic curves. So um, I actually first noticed this, and I get commissioned to do a lot of pictures. And um, so I got commissioned to do the cover of the, of the conference proceedings after Fermat's last theorem was proved. And uh, Andrew Weil's famous theorem that did that was um, elliptic curves are modular. And uh, so when you do it with this sort of pattern like that, you see elliptic curves occurring in the modular tiling. So I wanted to say modular curves are elliptic too, but they didn't like that joke. So anyway, you know, it's not all mathematicians have a sense of humor, but anyway, that's it. That's a fun thing. That's all I'm going to do. Uh, that's all I'm going to do with that right now. So uh, we can go back to the projector there. There, but anyway, you saw the main point is that there are groups of symmetry that comes out of the Moir pattern. The Moir pattern like that. And, and that's a math problem right there. That's the type of math problem I like, where something physical happens, and it's up to you to figure out what the, what the curve is, what the math is behind it, how many circles there are, where the centers are, and so forth. Yeah. For the three little slides that you just showed, convoy? Yes. So we yes. Just right, the right, yeah, right, right. So if you print your own, <laughs> which I have done many of, the cool thing to do is to take different numbers 
of radio lines going through and see what happens. Do you get circles? Do you get other kinds of curves? All that stuff is phenomenal questions. Anyway, but you can also just play with them and look at them. So. Anyway, yeah, no. Um, so right, so but the, the main thing I'm talking today is is about um, um, things that develop from these uh, patterns of circles that arrive and that arise. And uh, let's see if I can get this stuff off. We're going to have to rear the printer and on the screen it doesn't work because you have aliasing effects with the pixels. So you actually get things just on the screen by themselves because of the resolution when they get together. Oh, you mean more patterns on, uh, yeah, I mean, if you're on a TV screen yeah, or something? Yeah, I mean, you, you run into real things, right? You right, mask, yeah, no. The mask gets confused with the pixels, and if you have a bad printer uh, without high resolution, then things don't work that well. So it's really more, if you want to print them, make sure that you have a real good printer. Right, yeah, no, more patterns are a serious problem. Uh, they're actually, so that not only are they a defect, but you can actually turn that around, and they're actually used in quality control. So any, anything that has to be finely machined, they use uh, line filters like that to see if you, if you superimpose it and, and if there's any defect at all, you'll see a moi pattern appear. And you'll know that something's wrong with your manufacturing process. So there is all sorts of applied stuff like that. that by now you already know that I'm into toys, so <laughs> I mean, I'm, just, I'm just aware of that stuff, that's all. Anyway, all right, so, um, so let's uh, go on here. So now. Uh, everything I'm going to study about circles, and uh, there's, a, there's a couple of issues with studying circles like that and, um, and the transformations that preserve them. And the biggest one you come across first is complex numbers, which um, is kind of shamefully left out of elementary school. <laughs> you know? And actually, after, after Jim Tanton's talk, I thought, man, why can't we do complex numbers? I mean, complex numbers, they're just the thing which if you square it, you get an anti-dot. You know, so if you have the right, right system of dots like that, you'll get complex numbers in elementary school. So anyway, I need that. I need that to, to do everything I'm, I'm going to talk about. It's, uh, and in fact, I have to tell you that, um, so I, I, I'm just going to show you a few slides that I usually show when I'm trying to explain complex numbers. This is one you'll see in almost every textbook that shows the plane. And you think of the I, the square root of minus 1, as the vertical component, and the, the 1 as the, as the uh, as the horizontal component. And, uh, and there's all the usual notation. You, you don't really need to know all that stuff. I'm just showing you some stuff I've done. I, I've, I've never really worked this with a circle, but I've worked with so many students on projects like this that I kind of feel a little bit like I have. Uh, but, um, and and I, you always go through, and you go through the arithmetic and all like that. And, you know, I mean, if, if there's no reason why you can't learn this really early on. I, I don't know exactly why it's, uh, it's not taught earlier, but uh, it's such a beautiful thing. I mean, the trouble is the name, the name complex numbers, you know, and some people have tried to do something about that, you know, because it's, complex numbers are just as bad, about as badly named as irrational numbers, you know, so, uh, uh, but, um, so there's a book by Ian Stewart, I believe, uh, called Nature's Numbers, have you seen that book there, like that, so he's, yeah, Mumford tried to promote that, it, did, it didn't sell. It's complex numbers for all time. I'm sorry they're labeled that way, but but nature's numbers is a pretty good idea. I'll say that. So um, anyway, uh, let me go a little further here. Here's a picture I use sometimes. So um, you have to uh, try to illustrate that complex numbers are a way of addressing points in the plane. And so here's a little map. There's a little guy in the complex plane, and you could say that his his house is kind of a ramshackle house. It's at uh, basically whatever I could get off clip art, it's at 2 plus 3i, and his office is down at 2 minus 3i, and things like that. You get a little addressing. Now the other side, that's kind of cool, because that's multiplication by complex numbers. You can, you can multiply by the complex numbers, and the three blue dots become the three red dots, okay? And you might think about, well, what's the complex number that does that, you know? That's kind of an interesting thing to learn about right, right, right there when you're first studying complex numbers is, what multiplication does to that kind of geometry. So, so then I and then I um, I ask that question: What's the complex number that does that? And then I put a little notation. And I don't do this with you know I'm I'm mostly aiming at at uh, at high school or undergraduates. That's my my real uh, bread and butter. And um, you know I say that uh, everything you do in Euclidean geometry can be done with complex numbers. In fact, 
you know, when you learn, and I really didn't learn about geometry of complex numbers until late high school, early college, and I thought, well, why did I suffer through all that Euclidean geometry when this makes it so much easier, you know, when you deal, when you deal with complex transformations, that everything is so much simpler. So, yeah, that previous slide there on the transformation that sent the blue dots to the red dots, at this point you're supposed to fill in the blanks there and say, what's the complex number that, that does that? And uh, you can see that it's, it's a rotation together with a dilation. Uh, but it's all wrapped up into one single complex number. Okay. So anyway, um, I'm trying to avoid saying any answers. But now, the symmetries that came up in that Moir pattern are, are the Mobius transformation. So, uh, and, um, you know, Mobius wrote this, uh, this work on barycentric coordinates. And it was all done in real coordinates in projective geometry. And it was very, very complicated. <laughs> The actual linear fractional transformation that you learn in college, so like I said, I mean, you could learn a lot earlier than college, um, is um, due to Poincaré. It's one of Poincaré's brilliant insights that appears in his early papers, and Felix Klein, after which the groups of names are staggered by the simplicity of it all. So all the, all the transformations, these are all the transformations that map circles or lines to circles and lines in the plane. Any transformation that that always maps a circle to a line or a circle that has to be a linear fractional transformation or an anti-linear fractional transformation with a, with a complex conjugate superimposed in it. And uh, people have talked about inversion and all like that. Inversion is, is done with, very easily with linear fractional transformations. It's all these formulas here. Very simple to calculate. All right, so um, here's a little movie here. Let's see if this works, I hope. This is one single linear transformation and um, he's going to move a little walk. So let's see if it comes up here. Come on up here, please. Okay, let's see. Is that quick? Okay. Uh, oh, here, here we go. Here we go. Oh, gosh, it's going to be quick time. Hey, he's a little slow, okay? And uh, I can't zoom it in and it's all like that. But wait a bit. He's coming, all right? So he's coming. There's a couple of guardrails there to keep him safe. So, uh, all right, here he comes, here he comes, here he comes. All right, and every time he's taking a step, it's one application of the linear fractional transformation. And he's spiraling around, you get an idea, and you know, he doesn't really realize it, but at a certain point in the walk, his head is really swollen up, and then it shrinks down to a pea size, and his feet are really big, and all like that. So there you go, that's it. That's one single transformation. And, um, I have to say that when I got into this, you know, very early in life, you know, I really wanted to deal with complicated combinations of linear fractional transformations, but later in life, I'm happy with just one. There's so many interesting things which uh, I'm going to try to show you here. Okay, now, groups of transformations. So, this is, I haven't said what a Kleining group. Klein, of course, is the great Felix Klein. He was, you know, maybe the one of the prominent mathematicians, leaders of German mathematics at the turn of the uh, 19th century and the 20th century. He also, I don't know, not everybody's aware of this, but Felix Klein came to America at the time of the famous Chicago World's Fair. Was anybody aware of that? That he, he actually was invited to America. He had many American students. There are many American students who came from Klein and established American, the American mathematical uh, system, really. And uh, he was invited to Chicago, the Chicago World's Fair, to celebrate Chicago becoming the great uh, metropolis. And he gave a set of lectures on all of <laughs> mathematics as he saw it, right there like that. So anyway, a Kleinian group is, uh, is a collection of Mobius transformations that's closed under composition and inversion. And not only that, it has to have a certain special geometry. It has to, when you see these, these uh, Transformations acting on the plane, like moving a stick figure around, they, you have to see a special pattern appearing. I don't want to go into the details of it like that. Um, everything I do, pretty much, it was not entirely. I mean, I, I, I consider all kinds, but everything we're going to do in this talk is obtained from two single transformations, one or two single transformations. And all you do is consider all possible compositions of the two and see what they do to objects in the plane. And that's a Kleinian group. So anyway, um, and it's, you know, when you explain it at that level, uh, you really don't need to know a lot. So here's, a, here's, a, here's an interesting fact that was discovered by Peter Doyle, and it's, it's rephrased. Uh, 
discovered it in the mid '80s, and I love it because it's a. That's the way I like to write theorems. <laughs> okay, so uh, so this is about a single uh, linear fractional transformation. Now we're going to get into the connection with circles. Um, so the left side says, suppose I have four circles that are tangent in that way, and there is a transformation that maps them according to the red arrow. So the, the, at the end of the red arrow, the transformation takes that circle to that circle. And similarly for the, the pink uh, circles, the transformation takes that to that. Well, if that's the case, then there has to be a unique other transformation that maps them in the other direction, that maps them in accordance with the, the, uh, the blue arrows. So that's a fact that you can prove. It's a, it's a beautiful problem, actually. It, it's a little bit of work when you're dealing with complex numbers, but uh, it's a very simple pattern, and it says that with any transformation that maps according to the red arrows, there must be a sister transformation that maps according to the blue transformations. And not only that, the two transformations, it does, they're commuting. And so the last line of the theorem says that the two will commute. You can do it in either order like that. Okay, and you get this wonderful pattern coming out of it called a, a, Doyle, a Doyle packing. So what we do now is we apply all compositions of those transformations. All right, now, what happens is if you choose them just right, like what, what you're seeing here, the red arrows are applying one of the transformations over and over again. So I, you know, I use notation. I call these two transformations A and B. And so if you go A, 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 and then you go B inverse back there, or the inverse of B, and you're back to the circle that you started with. So there's actually a, there's actually a relationship among those circles. And actually to find that is just elementary algebra, but it, it's actually not, it's not an easy problem to find the, what the two transformations are that link up in this way. And when you do, though, you get the gold. You get the gold of, of the incredible circle pattern that comes when you do this to, uh, so there, that's what that pattern looks like. If you, uh, I had to blow it up a little bit like that, and I've had to color it in different ways, but that's, that, that's an example of a spiral circle packing, also known as a Doyle packing, uh, which is studied in, a, the first article on it was um, in an article by Ken Stevenson and uh, Alan Bearden and Tomas Dubeco. And um, anyway, so that's an example. Now it turns out that they proved that every, um, Every Doyle packing that arises in this way is uniquely associated to a pair of integers. Um, they're, they're the pair of integers that describe how you come back and link up together. So in this case, this is the 1 16th one. So hopefully when I was going through all the AAAs, I thought I said 16 or whatever. But anyway, you do 16, you come around, and you're back to, uh, you're back to using B inverse to get back to that. That's the 1 16th one. And it's quite a serious problem to actually calculate these. So if you look at the end of, Alan, of um, Ken Stevenson's book on circle packings, he talks about this issue there. And uh, if you try them more and more, the colors aren't so, let's see if I can zoom it up a little bit here. Anyway. Okay. Yeah, this is another counting problem. Ah, shoot, the, the color is kind of broad. Well, all right, if you're a number theorist, you're going to have to sort of squint your eyes to count there. Anyway, there's a fraction. There's a P and a Q associated with that. You have to follow the spirals around. Okay, I, I'm not to be held liable for any sort of damage to your eyes after <laughs> looking at these images, by the way, or counting or anything. My eyes are damaged enough, that's for sure. Um, so, um, right, so everyone has associated with that. There's even more to it than that. It, there's something that um, this sort of thing is entirely elementary. You know, it, you have to work hard at it, but uh, you can keep going. You can take more and more complicated patterns. After a while, you start to see that there's a living behavior. The living behavior, I sort of know what it is, I have a conjecture what it is, but right now it's currently unproved, at least in this situation or like that. And it's really a fascinating subject to get into. Just with, just with a single Mobius transformation, just trying to make it map the circles in kind of, um, the, uh, uh, in kind of the way that makes this pattern occur. Now the other issue here, you can see that I've done a, and I wanted to show you, you know, obviously the, the other issue besides knowing complex numbers, there's, there's really nothing besides complex numbers and algebra. That's hard enough, but, but programming. Programming is an issue that you don't hear too often in math clubs, but for me, 
learning to program just amplified my math tremendously like that. And that, that's an issue. You have to choose some kind of paradigm to program in. There are simple languages that allow you to do this sort of thing. And um, uh, I think bringing that in to problem solving is actually kind of excellent. You know, to tell you the truth, I, um, I enjoyed the uh, decomposition of rectangle into squares, but uh, I kind of wanted to program it. <laughs> at the very beginning, I was hearing that earlier this morning, but uh, anyway, the answer at the end was quite good, too. So, All right, so here we go. Let's see if this works. Uh, all right, there we go. So now you can see that, that that's the beginning pattern like that. If you, it goes really quickly. Uh, if you see it, uh, I'm going to do the uh, more uh, extensive ones. All right, so let's see. This is the whole spiral. Ghostview keeps asking me if I have a registered copy, which unfortunately I don't, but uh, anyway, there we go. It's a, it's a freeware thing, so, all right. So there, you can get an idea of the, of the flow of the transformation when you see the circles uh, going that way. Um, like I said, I, I, you know, I, I generally plot like, a, I don't know, on a good day I can plot a million circles on a given day, so, <laughs> so I, I figure I have to be in the Guinness Book of Records, so. Anyway, we'll see. We have to research that there. So this is here's the uh, oh, you saw the answer there. The answer was seven over forty-three for that one. Yeah. So here we go. That's kind of cool to see it go around and all like that. Why why does it begin from somewhere in the middle? Well, that's an interesting question, but that's a that's a that's a program, yeah, because you know the integers go in two directions, right? And so you have to decide where to start. <laughs> and, uh, and so I started at zero, and I did all the positive ones, and then eventually I'm going to come back and do all the negative ones. Yeah, that's right. So uh, yeah, no, this is a doubly right. All all Mobius transformation, uh, the Mobius transformations we're looking at have two fixed points. One of which is a repelling fixed point. The other is an attractive fixed point. So. The, the transformation comes out of one and into the other. Okay, but I'll show you the movie that, so I, you know, the algorithm that generates them does it the way it's shown on the picture right now. Uh, but uh, I have a little movie of it where I added a little bit more stage direction, and um, so here's the movie. Okay, this is gonna be, uh, this is a quick time to do, so. Um, all right, so you gotta wait a bit for it to start. Okay, here it comes, here it comes, all right. So there, now it's, it's starting, it started at negative infinity and it's going to go to positive infinity, if you're willing to believe that. Okay. <laughs> okay, you see, the, you see the pattern there? Something strange happens right in the middle. Right, because, uh, yeah, I didn't show you the whole pattern. They, there are only finitely many circles. All right, this is the second one. So, by the way, that was a one arm. Oh, all right, I'll tell you what, notice what's different about this one. Oh, it's kind of obvious. You know, I, this one actually has two spirals. You have to do one and then the other. So it, it's finishing up on the first one, and it should be starting the second one. And there it is, going like that. Okay. Okay, there you go. That's a, that's a two-armed one. Right? Yeah, we might as well. Uh, it waits for a second. So you might as well see a three-armed one. This is going to be one with a denominator of three. And uh, it's quite faster. When the numerator is high, you know, there's more arms that... The plotting is much faster. And you, you can see that the circles sort of go outside the frame. So that's the second arm. And then the third one is going to be coming any second. It takes a long time to get down to infinity. And then uh, you come back out and you're out to infinity again. So. All right, there we go. So those are, Doyle, those are the Doyle spirals. I, I just enjoy them so much. And I enjoy talking about them with people. And uh, so, right. So um, is it because of this kind of minimal energy? Pardon me? Is it behind the spirals there's some kind of minimal energy principle? Or to, to find out what they are or something? Or, uh, well, okay, now, uh, right, there, there is a, there is a uh, I haven't really gone into the details of Mobius transformations, but one thing we know is that they, uh, they conserve angles. They, are, they can also be classified as the, as the most general transformations of the plane that preserve angles. They do not preserve distance, but they do preserve uh, angles on the plane. Okay, so they're called the conformal maps. Uh, so in a certain, that's kind of a conservation principle. Uh, now, actually, they do preserve distance, but they preserve distance in another space we're not looking at. So there are, one of the great developments of this subject in the last uh, 40 years or so is the three-dimensional aspect. So there is a three-dimensional aspect there, 
I, I shade them in a way that kind of makes them look quasi three dimensional, but it not, isn't really. But if you were to look at it in a hyperbolic three dimensional space, all these transformations do preserve hyperbolic distance. So uh, in that sense, um, they have a lot of uh, rigidity in their structure. Okay, all right, anyway, I wanted to show uh, something else that I've been involved with. This one I, I was involved with a student at, at Oklahoma State. And, uh, um, there are other circles that people study connected with. This is a famous uh, definition that goes back uh, quite a way. So, so you notice that the Mobius transformations stretch some parts of the uh, some parts of the plane. They shrink other parts. There's a there's a there's a thing in the middle where they're exactly equal. You know, or at least right on it, they're exactly equal, and that's called the isometric circle. And the isometric circle. It, some, I've hidden some of the formulas there, which are a little bit ugly if you're not used to it. But the isometric circle has a very simple formula. You simply take the linear fractional transformation, A is E plus B. Remember that I, every letter I write down is a complex number, by the way, not, a, not necessarily a real number. So A, B, C, D are complex numbers. And you consider all the Z's such that the absolute value of the denominator, C, Z plus D, equals 1. And that is a circle. That's a circle. Uh, the center of it is negative d divided by c, and the radius is 1 divided by the absolute value of c. And um, that's called the isometric circle of the transformation. Of course, that only works if c is not 0. And so I have to tell you that isometric circles are only defined if c is not equal to 0. But um, there's a famous uh, past president of the MAA who uh, one of his great uh, achievements was the analysis of isometric circles of the Kleinian group. And he proved that if you plot all the isometric circles, the outside of, of those isometric circles, the common exterior, is, um, has the property that no two points in that common exterior um, are mapped to each other under any transformation in the group. And every point in the plane, or let me say every point except for a set of measure zero, is mapped to some point in that region outside the exterior of the so it turns out that the common exterior of the isometric circles has quite a lot of geometric information about the nature of that Mobius transformation and the, and the group generated by those Mobius transformations. So, um, and it turns out that even for a single transformation, um, so I, I, we did a project where we studied, uh, this, this is actually after a, a fundamental paper by Charles Jorgensen, who's a pioneer in this area, we studied linear fractional transformations that had a very stylized format. So uh, they had to satisfy, the transformation had to satisfy this equation with some unspecified lambda, some, I'm sorry, I'm a mathematician, I have to use Greek letters. I know that's probably bad, but anyway, lambda is used there, and uh, the absolute value of lambda has to be chosen in one direction. I, I, I often choose it uh, greater than one, although it works just as well for less than one. And so for different values of lambda, you will get different patterns. And uh, here's an example of a pattern here. So uh, I'll show you draw a drawing this here like that. This is a pattern of all the isometric circles of the powers of a single linear fractional transformation. Okay, and in a, in a bit I'll show it to you drawn live. The key thing is that if you notice, a lot of them are inside. There's only a few that have an arc on the common exterior. But which ones have that arc is a subject of incredible investigation. Like which values of lambda lead to that? So um, let me show it to you live and then you can kind of see that. And then I'm kind of running out of time, so um, uh, here we go. Okay, so here you're seeing it drawn live. So you notice it's actually doing a sort of going out to positive infinity and negative infinity at the same time. So let me, let me draw that again there and see if you can count which circles actually have arcs on the... Do it again. And it takes a while before you get to the ones that... They're actually the 10th and the 11th circles that, are, that have the arcs on the boundary like that. Well, if I chose slightly different transformations, which arcs have... Uh, which circles have arcs on the boundary changes dramatically. And it's quite an interesting computational problem to investigate uh, the map of transformations and, and how the arcs arise in that way. All right, well, anyway, let me get to my last set of pictures here, and then we'll call it a night. Um, okay, two transformations, and 
I'm kind of running out of time, so uh, this is going to be, so far everything I've shown you is, is a single transformation, but as it turns out, you can take two transformations in a complicated network of circles and say, can I find the two transformations that map the circles in this way? So one transformation sort of moves around this double spiral. The other transformation, the blue one, sort of whirls around in a circle from one side of this point to the other side. And the question is, can you arrange it so that they map all the circles into each other like that? And the answer is you can. If you start investigating the patterns that you can do with this, this is a complicated one. I didn't get to this the first day we started working on this. Um, but once you do, the, the pattern that comes out is truly, truly amazing. So that's iterating a little bit. You start to see some of the circles there. And now if you let them go all possible combinations, all possible combinations of the two transformations, uh, the, the rest of the plane is filled in. Okay, and that's the picture there like that. And actually, so that picture I made an artwork of, and there's, there's, a, there's a beautiful art gallery in Paris. Well, they're trying to get a permanent gallery of it, but it's called Mathematics and Art in French. And, uh, um, and so I, I have that hanging in that, in that thing there. And the, the curator tells me that, and so they bring school children, and it has many beautiful mathematical sculptures and works there. And um, I, I've been to it when it was in Palaiso. Uh, but um, they bring school groups there. School groups go and they look and they go, ooh, ah, and all like that. <laughs> Apparently my picture is the favorite among the eight to nine year old crowds. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, and my, my daughter, who is an artist, an oil painter, tells me I do have a six year old sense of color. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, what can I say? Uh, so here, let's, uh, let's zoom into it. And I just want to show you what it looks like um, I won't do everything here. I'll just do this is it. Um, this is it as it's drawn, which I have seen millions and millions of times. So there's an outer circle there like that. And the, the, the pattern for drawing them, how you do the combinations of A's and B's, is a whole story by itself. And uh, it takes a little while, but you can kind of see how it's going. You can see how, how it's filling out. You might sort of have conjectures about how the A's and B's are put together. Um, I have to tell you, it took me 20 years to learn how to color this. The coloring it by itself was a mathematical problem. I had no idea until about 2000 I realized that there was an abstract structure that told me exactly how to color this so that this pattern would emerge. You have to set the uh, Yeah, no, that would be Why nice. Backwards? Yeah, that's it. Why yeah, there we go. Yeah. So anyway, um, <laughs> Right, okay. Oh yeah, now there's one other picture I wanted to get to when this thing closes. I don't want to stop it prematurely, but it is fun to see it fill in finally. You know, when you're a programmer and you actually learn to do this uh, by whatever programming language you choose, you know, you're a little bit nervous that there's going to be a hole at the end. <laughs> I've watched it many times and, and uh, worried about it, but there's no hole, hopefully. I don't know. Aren't you nervous about infinite loop? Uh, yeah, no, that's another thing too. <laughs> that's another thing. No, 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 that has happened to me many times. Yeah, right. And the pattern keeps going, and then it starts drawing again. And I say, isn't this taking a long time? But anyway, yeah, there it is. Actually, it could be redrawing it right now, and you'd never know. That's part of the part of the colors is you'd never know that it's actually still going on. But anyway, that's it. Oh yeah, uh, I haven't really gotten into limit sets, but when you look at all these things, there's this bizarre fractal that's in between, and I I always trace it in with black. It's kind of a challenge just to draw the little black part that's in between all the circles. So that's the, that's the end of it like that. Now, uh, there's one thing I, want, I, mean, I wanted to say. I, I really enjoyed uh, hearing what everybody's experiences on this. And, um, um, oh, I, I, had, I have done all, oh, I wrote down the transformations. You can get that later for me. It, it takes a bit to figure out what the A and B are. And I, I am also involved, I've been involved with the Putnam competition from a wee lad from college. I've, I've, I suffered through it, I, I, I coached it, I, I still coach it, that's as close as I come to it. I mean, my Putnam practice sessions are an exercise in keeping everybody optimistic and positive. That's, a, that's the main thing. And uh, I actually wrote problems for it, and I actually graded it too, which was painful. But uh, there are many, 
many of these problems here, this is a famous arrangement, and you probably, this, this arrangement, by the way, is, uh, is an after Ford, the Ford, uh, Ford circles like that, and they have beautiful geometry and numbers. So this is, a, this is a simple problem. The circles are tangent to the line like that, and the center here is at height 1 8th. The center there is at height 1 18th. This one's at zero, it's on the y-axis. What's x? And then if you figure out what x is, then you have to figure out what the center of the little shaded circle is. Then you have to figure out there's a circle that's tangent to the two on the outside, what the center and radius is of that. And when you figure all that out, you come across this amazing pattern, the Ford circles, uh, which uh, Rademacher wrote this incredible rave about the Ford circles in his higher mathematics from an elementary point of view. So, uh, all right, so I just want to say I've got problems here, and I'm going to go through my problems. Yeah, I've got a ton of circle problems. Uh, yeah, this is it. Okay, so after all this talking about, uh, or I'll, I'll give you the big version of this here. Uh, I really have enjoyed everybody's experience here, and uh, I don't know if you recognize it, this, but I have, a, I have a student at Oklahoma State right now, and he spent summers in, well, in Russia. And uh, so he made this incredible picture, which I just I bought it off him. I didn't actually buy digital rights, so this is not going into anything like that. I have to talk to him about that, but I did buy a print off him, a couple prints actually. And uh, anybody know? Anybody see that? I'd love to see this someday. Anybody? It's St. Isaac's, yeah. It's St. Isaac's Dome in St. Petersburg, uh, Russia. And he got right under there, and there are the Russian math circles. That's what I, I don't know. I don't know. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, but uh, yeah, so there we go. That's all I have to say. So thanks very much for being here.